I think it's turned up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was I looking for? That's what I was just looking for. No, I was just calling it up. I just had to find it. Oh, okay. I do have some if you want some. Yep. All right, there's nobody here for public comment, so we'll go to stuff for the part. All right, I have um, items one. The minutes um, triggered me. Code enforcement officer will provide monthly updates for messy yards, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Is that something we're going to be seeing? Because I don't see such a report at this time. Yeah, uh, I thought so too. And um, the 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 report that the one report that I have is uh, the post on Penny Hill Road mm -hmm. with the tarp on the roof. Mm -hmm. um, he is. Um, trying to reach out to that person and isn't having a lot of luck getting a hold of her, but uh, okay. I think he is making some progress. Um, that's the only update that that I have. Because there are other yards in town that yeah. are um, yeah. not particularly attractive that people have been complaining about. Yeah. So, yeah. and I know this is a touchy subject, but we really, <clears throat> Yeah. Neighbors are concerned. It's yeah. you know it's appropriate. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. Well, I will need to uh, get a handle on that. Uh, yeah. Well, he will probably have. I probably won't see him till next week, but I'll ask him again. And we did tell him too that um you know as far as whatever he's working on to to stop in and um, you know just give us a more complete update. And he said that he would do that. It'd be good to know like you know what is sent and. Right. Yeah. Right. Something in writing would be nice for me. I just because yeah. I forget so, things. So the um uh the expectation has been previously set, right, about what we were requesting. Yeah. So what do we need to do to make sure that it happens? Right. Okay. Um uh what I could do is tell them the select board meetings are second Thursdays of every month, mm -hmm. but it's more like please have it by Monday, you know. It's more like when we're reaching out to the people, we're documenting when we're reaching out and giving them a deadline. That to... that's a piece of what we're looking that's at. That's right a there. very important piece of it. Yeah. yeah, that was not at all what we were talking about. Oh, okay. Okay, that, that yeah. too. I mean, this is a it's government business. It's yeah. not it's not a town constable who's just wandering around giving people warnings. So yeah. like this stuff is needs to be documented absolutely every step of the way. But we're, what we're asking for is a report that is telling us what's going on with the code enforcement department. It's right. impossible for us to provide feedback to the community if we don't know what's going right. on. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I have definitely expressed my concerns about that. Um, and I know that Marty has too. So. Um, so I'll the just, select board would like. I, I think we didn't, monthly we didn't reports. specify when, though. But I think if we maybe say um, that you know the select board meetings are on X days, and if we could have it by Monday, then we could put together you know a report or you know put it with all the pertinent information. The you know, right. Well, and that was <laughs> what I had originally planned. And so when I asked him, um, it was very like okay, so I issued um the earth moving and the point building permits and this and so that it wasn't it i mean although that's great information to have it wasn't like um i sent a letter on this day about this issue and um 
I mean, even like the animal control officer was like, I wouldn't care for a dog bite. Mm -hmm. And um, I gave them this kind of warning or whatever. So there wasn't any of that. And so I, I did express some like that's kind of more of what I was looking for. And so that was really the only update I ever got from him. And I haven't seen him. I don't know if he comes in like first thing in the morning or if I yeah, or he doesn't come in. A whole he lot. comes in usually once a week. Yeah. You know. And then he doesn't really seem to want to yeah. Oh. Yeah, he is. So, so like next week. Mike and I are, are good, good friends. And so I see him once in a while. But I don't often find him. Yeah, yeah. He didn't ask for it in writing, you know, but I think if he wrote something up like the animal control just an email right. summary that could be yep. then incorporated into a landis report or something it would be more specific i would just you can email you can just give him the template sure. that would okay. Work. Cool. okay that was uh one thing the usual concerns a couple things to report thank yous for the town of monson are one is on my porch and the other is being created by wendy and will get mailed eventually we'll um do something official from us, I think, when we send those out. But that's in process. Cemetery fence has been purchased. We just need to figure out where the money is going to come from to reimburse Glenn. Yep. And I did he give you the bill already? Mm, no. no. Okay. Uh, on that topic, Portland, at, uh, at Lincoln Park in Portland, near City Hall, they have a nice park there, there with a big, beautiful fence all the way around. And the fence is 150 years old. And they're, they're doing some work. They're raising $1.6 million to fix the fence. Wow. <laughs> so wow. we came off pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Did you say 4,500? 4,500, yeah. yeah. Well, was it just for a section of it? An assessment it's for a so fairly long, um, lengthy section. It's still not going to be enough to completely enclose, but mm -hmm. it'll, the old churchyard mm -hmm. cemetery. Mm -hmm. And the fence is currently in the um, vault building up on hillside i believe i was told yeah it's going to go with the snow roller and then glenn told me it ended up there so yeah okay well we'll have to work on that next year it it's not just putting a few posts in the ground there need need to be footings and there'll be additional expense mm -hmm. to make it happen but it's money well spent to preserve that area so for sure and for forty five hundred dollars for fence that for a bunch of fences. Yeah, yeah, to not pass up that deal. Yeah. Um, moving along, committees, rec committee, events committee. I keep, I looped in the rec committee for the pumpkin carving, which went very well, by the way. But um, kind of hoping they would take that over, which is yeah my plan. And the next thing that they, one of these groups might want to do is the New Year's Day thing, if they want to repeat that. It was a great event last year. People yeah. had a good time. The yeah. Bicentennial Committee is washing their hands of this stuff. Yep. So. It's, I don't understand. Like, these people are not, they'll respond and say, okay, I got your email, but they're not being responsive. Like, okay, this is what we have. Like, the pumpkin cart, like, nobody responds back and says, oh, that's great. Count me in. So maybe a, um, a poll for who's available these times and. And then just. To schedule the meeting because for. i mean we have even called them and said what days work for you best and then um they'll either change them mm -hmm. or whatever it may be so maybe a poll but i do know that krista varnio she's very very hard to try yeah she wants to make absolutely this work. absolutely so um she suggested maybe her and i going down um in the gym and going through some of that rest. Well, the gym is the next thing on the okay, list as cool. it happens. So cool. just to, with committees, get people to agree that the third Wednesday at six or whatever it is, is going to be the time. What it is. And yeah. just do it because otherwise it's going to float around forever. Yes, Nothing's okay. going to happen. Well, and, and I may be proved wrong, but people in town are kind of um, saying, oh, we have a rec committee? I didn't think we had a recommendation. Well, we do, and they're getting started. So let's yes. get them started, which segues into the gym. Um, Don 
Alan and who else went down and cleaned up the gym, maybe Cindy, cleaned up the gym basement, organized stuff, mm -hmm. got the Alumni Association stuff set, wreck. There's a whole bunch of junk down there mm -hmm. and a lot of space to store without shelving. So somebody needs to take it upon themselves to get some shelving built so that those things can be organized. So you guys have space, you being the Alumni Association. <laughs> the rec committee has space. Right. You know, the voting stuff is... Right. is in its allocated space well and there's no shortage of room there's right. just a shortage of organization exactly and, and somebody that's needs it. to own that mm -hmm. well i think that even if i have to come up here on a day that i'm not normally in the office um krista did say that we she would help me go downstairs and go through because um i mean there is some money in the budget for some of these activities that she would like right. to see happen right. but I don't want to be buying things that we already have or We've got whatever a lot of stuff down there. So I want to take inventory of what we already have before we start. And it kind of makes sense to me that the rec committee be in charge of gym stuff, but that, yeah. I don't know if that's correct I, or not. I agree. Somebody ought to take ownership of it though and keep track of things. All right, moving up my list. New vandalism to report at the memorial, the um, veterans memorial. Really? Yeah, well, the, the the steps that lead up to the main memorial, there's a sign to the left between the steps and the cemetery. Somebody's chipping away at the engraving, and, you know, taking the middle line of the A's and the E's out, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You gotta wonder, do we have to have cameras all over town? I mean, I, I hate to think that, but reporting it to you guys i've already told you about it just that's the hill that's the cemetery sign yeah the the new one i can't remember what it says but it's to the left of the monument yeah. if you're facing and then underneath it is the sign for the company that did the military press pass. i think so but just one of these irritating things really I mean, really but people are doing it and then my perennial telephone service I got an update for you. So is Good. that your last topic? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And I'll go. Um, so I spoke with Hilton, the tower company, and they uh, they have extended their their lease option on the property. So they're still committed to the building um, should a carrier opt to sign up. Uh, then I spoke with AT&T, the specifically the person who does this type of stuff, like rural underserved gaps in coverage in in New England and other places in New England. There were a lot of news articles about him meeting with select boards and, and local officials and getting, uh, getting projects over the finish line. Then also, it just so happened, um, I saw that uh, Troy Jackson had put out this press release about bringing three cell phone towers up to, to his district. And so, um, I was waiting for the dust to settle here before reaching out, but I'll reach out to him as well and, and get his take on what they did and if this was part of something that was already in the works or if it was really just a community effort. Um, it was a different tower company, but same same idea. The reason the reason for AT and T is because they are um, the implementers of the First Net program, which is like rural rural coverage, um, particularly for first response needs. And I let everybody know that the genesis of, of our conversation is partly about convenience, yes, but it, there actually was an accident number of years ago where somebody um, had a stroke or something at, in their car on uh, just north of town and ended up dying because, in part because it took first responders so long to get there because they couldn't dial 911 and then they had to bring the person, they brought them here and then they went to the hospital from here. That's a whole ordeal because of the way it went. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I reached out to them, they responded, looped in a couple other members of their team and we're scheduling a meeting to talk mm -hmm. about what that, what, how they see things and, and how we might be able to get something mm -hmm. done. So um, progress there. I've also, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Where is the new one at? The, the tower? It's the Rampus. Right, that's what it's called. Okay. Oh, it's still going to go up there. Yeah. Why did I think it would be down to the dump? Okay. Um, and then I've also, I also have contacts um, for the district directors for Senator King, Senator Collins, um, 
think we get it for twenty three gold and should should we need I because what I what I was asking others about was if I paid me to rattle the cages with with some um or the gov the governor's office about how to we just need to make noise about this or or what? But we were able to reach the, the team at AT&T, so okay. I think that's the most important piece. And if once they are on board, then Verizon and other companies yeah. will hop on. Yeah. Do they um, have other towers that just have at and or? Um, well, I think they're all based on all the towers. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just a matter of, yeah, once somebody goes on it, then all of a sudden oh, yeah. the other. Okay. We need the tower is yeah. what it really comes well, then down we to. We have the commitment for the tower. We need the first right to sign up. yeah um and and so tilson is planning a tower in mountain and also tower in shirley which is oh, wow. almost the, the entirety of the gap between mountain and Greenville. and then what about north guilford <laughs> i know where all the gaps are from driving in my car yeah, trying to yeah. talk to people and oh wait yeah <laughs> i'll call you back may say yeah so it's, that's less important but being able to use my phone here would be really awesome and i'm increasingly frustrated by not being able I, to i was on uh so i have no no cell coverage whatsoever at my house um so i have use wi-fi call-in mm -hmm. and i was on the phone with um the director of interconnection services at virgin power when the wi-fi crapped yesterday, out no and then my power went out oh <laughs> <laughs> and so the call dropped and then i called him back and we had a good laugh about that so yeah. <laughs> Never a dull moment, huh? Okay. So that's the update on the cell phone tower. Okay. Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask one other thing about. Um, can, can I see the minutes? Do you have a copy of them? Oh yeah, the GIS is. Um, I yeah, sent yeah. I sent her all of um the stuff that she needed, and then she said, um, usually the assessor will make marks and stuff on the current pass route so that they know where the changes are. Um, that's really something that I can do, but she she just got back to me with needing that kind of information. Um. On Tuesday, so I haven't had a chance to do that piece of it. Um, but she was able to make some updates. So we're slowly getting there. The online stuff is far from updated. And is that the that just takes time or well, so the last update was in what 2020 was the last it's never been updated. It was that was when it was well, born. okay. So when it was born, it was the 2020. So I was under the impression that he um she just needed the copy of the commitment book and so then we corresponded about that so i sent her a copy of that when that was finished and then she was like no we actually need um like uh i'll i'll send you the export that we got the last time so i was like okay so then i called trio to figure out how to make that export for her so then i did that and then she, on tuesday she emailed me back and said um so on the actual parcels to make corrections on okay. the, the parcel so that's so it's coming so it's yeah. coming but it's i wasn't 100 percent sure what she was asking for when she asked for it and then she wasn't sure what i was saying in the beginning so now we're on the same page anyway communication is important. but she has almost all of the information she needs she just okay. needs the actual drawing out on the map of the and then she makes the changes wow that's so sad Convoluted. <laughs> when will it be done? Uh, well, I wanted it to be done already, but um, I'll I'll have it done by the next meeting. Good. That would be great. Okay. All right. Over to you, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we and I, and I'm sorry, my memory might be failing me. So the rules of order we talked about um, last meeting. Um. And Elena, you said uh, it would be easily be changed for meeting schedule on that. But did we sign a copy of it? Because there's like signatures on the bottom because it's like a yeah annual. Yeah. Thing. Did we sign that? Yeah, I'm pretty I'm sure. sure. Um, yeah. because 
I yeah, because uh, Eric's name was on it before, so I think that the same book. Yeah, but did he actually sign it last meeting? I'm pretty he sure he signed a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I obviously don't have it with me because just some if you could check. But yeah, I'll I'll okay. check on that. Check. I want to make sure we're doing all the material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um. Let me ask you about that. Um. The rules of water was just last meeting. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Um. We talk. Um. I know. I stopped by at some point to sign the warrant that we can talk about um, demolition fees. If you remember finding him ask Pat about that, the issue was we were wondering if some trash has been thrown in the demo pile, and so what we're paying now to demo demo rates rather than trash rates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this what you're asking to about in the agenda? Yeah. So I think so this has to be about lost revenue, right? Because if, if someone's putting trash in the demo, it's not costing us more, but it is they're not paying us as much. True, but we they they end up paying more for the um, demo funded, which is ten years. Um, not materially. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure how, how that worked either. Um, because they charge us by the ton, so I guess any extra weight yeah. in there at all would right. would. Yeah. But do we pay the um MSW by the, the ton too? I'll buy the I think that's by the load. Okay. Thank you. Of the um, tax um, no, actually, because we get the um those bills come from Mark, Mark and yeah. they yeah, that's tonnage as well. Okay, so okay. I guess so it would depend on whether the rates were different. Right. 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 So but the revenue piece is but concerning. the revenue piece is yeah, it's very concerning. Um especially when we're looking at the bills as to what our demo is these days and what we're receiving for our meeting. And I'm curious if there is a difference from month to month. Like we know when we have like um, people renovating, we have a bigger demo um, cost, but you would think that that would go down as the season, you know, from that building season. Um. I know that this month's was a lot lower than when we I initially brought this up because mm -hmm. the I think that was what fifteen thousand dollars was the that month. was one big one that mm -hmm. was like fifteen thousand dollars and this month was like I want to say four or I thought it was like five or six yeah, five. Was so that would be the bill for October that you right. got in November yeah yeah so it it sense. is coming down that fifteen thousand dollar one was just more like. What is what happened here, and what did our revenue look like for that month? Because they're they're not. I mean, there's going to be a gap, but not like this. So, um, um, I I tried a little bit um on Tuesday, but everything is going great down to the transfer station. No problems, no nothing. Um, so I need to think of a plan to address the issue without upsetting sure. individuals. So yeah. Is yes. this something that happens regularly? Like mm -hmm. how did this even come to light? I think it was just mentioned that we had a huge or somebody mentioned that oh the demo bill. Yeah. Yeah the demo oh, bill okay. and what our revenue looks like for demo each month versus what our bills look like. And maybe it is just our our rates are just not in line with what we're paying or um I know we talked about you know what a truckload is versus a trailer right right so that's something that we can reevaluate because that that's not really i mean a truckload versus like and what constitute as a trailer like a big long trailer I, like I, I was here when we had this discussion last time yeah um we're happy to have it again okay happy to have it again all right but it, it I remember that a big piece of it was we wanted to raise the rates so that we were not losing as much money on every deal, right. but also not have them be so high that people were concerned. Exactly. About exactly. Debt. And like, um, and maybe I'm wrong here, but my thought process is the average person and when they are doing, you know, the yearly cleanup or whatever, they're using their pickup truck or maybe a small utility trailer. But these people that are doing you know, construction jobs or mm -hmm. big demo projects, they're, they're hauling in big trailers and stuff. So we're paying, 
it's $30 or $50 or whatever for this big, huge trailer. It's not really. Well, we were, when we first made the new rate, um, you know, because they have those utility trailers that are basically the same size as a pickup mm -hmm. truck. Mm -hmm. And then I, I think that it was broken down into like a, a square yard or a yard or something. And so Jim was going to just charge accordingly based depending on the size of the trailer. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Do we know if he actually does that? I don't know. Yeah. Um, and more patrol in the demo area regardless if if we're if everybody's being honest that's great mm -hmm. but i do know that there is household trash because i mean it's it's ripped up all over the lawn uh, lawn down there um and it gets picked up quite frequently so i know that that is an issue so mm -hmm. it will be an issue so whatever whatever the interesting it's unfortunate that you, you need a babysitter at the transfer station mm -hmm. but and there's only one person there. Yeah. Kind of do all that. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. maybe it might be a good idea to have a helper. You know, somebody who can be outside while he's taking money yeah. at the compactor and, you know, yeah. paying a little bit more attention to things. Maybe. What does he think about that? I guess would be the Definitely question. have to ask him. He might not think it's a bad idea. Yeah. I was going to say, it probably would depend on yeah. who it is. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll go hang out with him. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I got an email from Chris Frost, and I think you did as, as yes. well as that the email I about did. the um, new website. Um, and so hopefully that's going to be coming along very soon. Mm -hmm. But have you had conversations with him about like um, who in the office or? Be able to kind of update it and it's probably going to be jade she's the updater she does mm -hmm. the updating to really everything the website yeah. facebook and you know all of that stuff so yeah. uh, i'm gonna say it's likely gonna be yeah. it would be good if one or both of you also knew how to do it though mm -hmm. in the event jade's not here and something needs to happen oh yes and having each having our own login with our own information that's the hardest piece is because you know we all haven't been here for forever and somebody needs a password or whatever and it's nowhere to be found and then you would think resetting a password would be fairly easy but mm -hmm. things like um, email apparently takes an act of congress to do um but yeah the, a new new all the way around would be better yeah. and i'm just thinking in terms of you know be thinking about what we want on the municipal side of the website, right, um, right, and then uh, make it easy for people to navigate and find information. Mm -hmm. um, and my last one is just going through the the previous minutes. Um, could we somehow? Um, there's a lot of things that we talk about at previous meetings, and we say we're going to do something. I think it kind of gets lost in the future shuffle, um, and some of it's most of it's in like in the select board report area. There's a couple in the old business. Um, just a way for like when we do an agenda for the next meeting to go through and just kind of make sure we're pulling in the things that we wanted to follow up on regarding the stuff um, how we talked about. Um, we talked about like with the state and the county um, consider installing cameras in the driving of windows and just. I just don't want to forget about some of the stuff that we talked about because um, it was um, a lot of important information. What was the other one? Um, could, could, it could even be the town manager report, right? Kind of loose ends from true. Uh, from the previous meeting. Yeah. Just, just to give a status update to the ones that lost in the works. Yeah. Might be helpful. Um, and the last thing, we, I know I brought up the last meeting um, when we were at the NMA conference um, and the, the road session about the, the signage for a North Street truck um, on road, the has to go through the select board. That's the, the proper channel um, to make it legal. And I know we have a sign up on going onto North Fairchurch on the main road um, for North Street um, trucks. Um, and there's not one on the other end of town anymore. Uh, Anymore, right? But this one really isn't legal because we never were going to 
what I'm going to do with it. Um, and I just don't want to lose sight of that you know, in everything. Um, I asked Pete um, about the having a traffic ordinance or, um, and so he said that he was going to send me all the information on how to adopt a traffic ordinance that would allow us to then do that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so he's going to send me the process. Okay. Of that. I forgot about the traffic ordinance. Yes. Piece, but correct. Very yep. good. Thanks. Which would include speed limit. No, because select board can't um, do speed limits. But we're waiting um, for the state to so, tell us about speed limits. Right. So he does a study. So um, I can't remember what his first name is, but anyways. Um, so all they needed basically was a written request to come and do a study on our roads. Um, so when are they going to do that? Um, he said that he thinks he could get up here before the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. Because so he said that most of the time, um, once he can get up here and do it, it doesn't take very long after that because we don't have very many roads to right really study. Anyways, I don't want this to become a perennial discussion. Like every meeting, we have the same. No. Yeah. No discussion. Um. Yeah. So he just needed okay. his written piece, and he's he's on it now. All right. All right. Uh, time to end your report. Okay. Get back to it. And make sure that. Okay. The Community Resilient Partnership Survey. Um. So I touched base with Lori. Mm, ocean, I think is what yeah. I said. Okay. Um, and she said that we can go ahead and fill out this um self evaluation, uh, which we did for the most part. There were some um questions that I wasn't a hundred percent about, so I figured we could just discuss them. Um, and then she says so once you go ahead and fill out the self evaluation checklist to have a public hearing and discuss the checklist mm -hmm. and document it as such on the checklist. And then um, then you can move on to the next step of applying for the. So um, like I said, I have most of the checklist all filled out. There's four questions um, on the front of the page that we can talk about in, in the session, the workshop. And she also said that she's leading um, some of the workshops this winter, and she would be more than willing to come and help us lead ours if we choose to go that route. So um, we can either, well, actually, so if we want to have her included in our workshop, which I'm assuming we do, um, should I reach out to her to see when she would be able to help us? And, or do you guys have a preference? And maybe we should schedule it and then ask her if she can be there or whatever, however you guys want to do it. Um, and can she help us do that before we go to our public So she helps us in, in our public workshop. Public workshop. Yeah. Okay. So she helps lead that discussion, I guess. Um, but she said that doing the the checklist ahead of time gives us more to talk about in the workshop. And so we're not doing the checklist. Um, but I can either send you guys a copy of what I have on the checklist so far, or you guys can look at it, or however you guys want to do it. Um, but yeah, so that's where I am with that. Uh, oh, so yeah. we we kind of need, as a group, to finish the checklist. Is that what I'm hearing? Um, yes, if I could have some. She said that we could finish the checklist at the, uh, because there's like two questions. Do you want us, do you want us to go through this right now? Sure. Okay. okay, so has your community assessed the likelihood of each hazard, how the likelihood of each hazard has changed over time and may change in the future? If your community has not tracked trends historically, you might infer past trends by determining if current priorities have shifted compared to past hazard mitigation plans. For example, drought or wildfire might be an emerging concern. So is it something that we're doing right in this moment? I would say no. Okay. Well, a lot of these, Marty and I were like, 
And some of these. Disturbing colors. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the next one has the community assess the impacts or consequences of each type of hazard for the community. For example, flooding on Main Street impedes emergency services and affects local businesses. So at first we've all thought about it, but are we actually doing anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. And some of these, like it will say, refer to your comp plan or um, local hazard plan. And since I'm going to go ahead and say that we don't. Okay, so those were the only two questions. And I know that they seemed crazy, but I just wasn't sure. sure? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Cool. All right, so it's all ready. Um, so do you want me to reach out to Lori to see when she would be available to help with a workshop? Or, yeah, and then... I would, so this is probably not a, is this like a two, three hour thing? Or is it like a one hour thing? I would just, I would assume that it would be like a one hour thing, but I can, I can check with her like what really the workshops really entail because, and okay, so here's the four questions that um, we would be talking about. Uh, what are two things your community is doing well? What are two areas that could be improved in the short term? And what is important for your community to address in the long term? And what specific three to five actions are priorities for your community? So those are the topics, I guess, of the or workshop or however you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned she might bring us through what you know the list of things you're doing backwards, but it would well if we would. Yeah, why don't why don't you reach out and get a sense of how much time we should reserve for this? Okay. If we should, then that'll tell us if we should do it on the on its own night or mm -hmm. if we should just do it before it and then start working. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me just write that down. Because if we're, you know, if we're gonna, if it's like a public hearing, that's that's one thing. If it's a, if it's a community visioning session, yeah. right. that's totally different. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. So we did that one. Gym and fire department repairs. Um, so we have reached out to several contractors and um, we have followed up with them to see if they're still interested in giving us a quote or the general consensus is they're just extremely busy. Mm -hmm. um, we did receive one quote from Archie um, and I have like something on my desk. Anyway, um, it, it was for the trim repair for around the fire department doors um, to close in the gaps. Um, and both the side gym doors at the gym, obviously, um, and to fix the front door here. So um, I'm going to reach out with, to him and hopefully get those done before, or at least too far planted. Um, uh okay so no nobody else bid on any of that no okay so what was your bid let me grab did, did we not talk about the priority um i don't think so no hang on um, let me grab my elena and i've talked about it because i gave her his name but he popped right down and did a bit he's the guy who painted the historical okay. society and also painted our barn and just also fixing the neighbor's roof. He does all <laughs> he, he does good work. That's all I can say. He, he's um timely. He does I thought his quotes were very reasonable. And yeah. then I looked at him and I was like, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I did suggest to Elena that we ought to try to get other bids. Yeah, yeah. Apparently that's and true. I sent the name to some of the people calling but we, we tried. We did. Yeah. Um okay, so for the total was three thousand three hundred and forty five. Um, but that For the gym, the fire department, and the town office. Door. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, um, it's it's actually going to be a little bit more than that because um, this was before we realized that both of the gym doors were really needing to be replaced. Um, but yeah, so that's what his quote was for, and he has it um broken down per whatever it was, and to build a roof over the gym door as well. So. What was your total? 3,345. And then um, 
I'll show you the other door. You can see the same door, so I take that in the water there. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus, anything he uncovers in the process, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. which we don't want to know about, we do need to know about that, sir. Yeah, so um, in the kilns, we, they have done a lot of the base work around some of these materials repairs um so he stopped in and he's like okay so if we're not appraisal that can do it because we're just really busy um he also let me know that the door frame of the front door is is new so we should be able to get away with just replacing the actual door which i didn't know about um so that was good information to have anyways so that's that yep. mm -hmm. um okay and the public works slash fire department space. Um, all the quotes that I got back for adding a garage door downstairs come to 15,400. So that's for the door, the cutting of the concrete and the electrical work um, necessary for that. And although it would be still really a, a short term fix, but a longer term than say like a portable garage or something like that. So it's a medium term fix. Um, and there still is roughly $38,000 left of the 2019 bond that we could use towards that. Um, but the long term thing is, is we still need either, I'm going to set proposed a new public works building because essentially like like we said in the past if they get any more equipment than what they have now they're they're already limited so um this the fire the, the in the public works like if they yeah i mean really all of us but we we make do um so, so i understood from talking with tim the other day that if even a new fire truck would fit in the bays that exist downstairs now right so if we could get public work stuff out of there a new truck could easily go there right. and this extra door would give you the more options there would be five, five bay doors right basically so that's room to store a whole lot of fire department right. equipment right exactly or you know um that extra bay doesn't necessarily even have to be fire department related it could be you know if someday we get bigger and we have our own lawnmowers or whatever um you know, we have a, a bigger cemetery crew or storage is definitely a lack thereof in this building. And right now there is a boat that downstairs that I have no idea how they got it in there without having a garage door because it's on a trailer as well. So they got it in there for a regular size door. I wish they could figure out how to do that with a fire truck. It would solve a lot of my problems. Okay, the boat's in there. What, what's left that needs to go inside? Um, the loader. The loader. That's going to end up living outside this winter, unfortunately, because we just. We don't have space for we it. Don't have space. Well, but the whole, I thought when we, if we put in the door, then we would have enough space. Right. So, yes. So if we put in the door, we could, it wouldn't be fire department space necessarily right away. We could use it for public works stuff. Right. Well, or move their fire, fire truck, truck over, over there, there, and then we would right. have our public right. works bay back. And then, um, so this is, I just want to back up and make sure we're all on the same page. We do this, it's temporary, just have both public works and fire department equipment stored in the building. But and it ideally, just... we would want a separate public works building for the loader, the truck, the lawnmowers, whatever else. The standard might... thing so that they're not sitting outside or right. in the elements. So um... longer term is a separate public works right. building, shorter term. Putting a bay door down there would get us through the winter anyway. Yes, and it would serve us longer term than just yeah. the this this immediate a couple of weeks. And then we get another building for the public right. works. Now the and fire department has room, breathing room so, to plan yeah. for said public works. So um, makes sense to me. I don't think it's going to be money thrown away because we'll end up using that space. Is there I, any repair needed? You mentioned at one point in the past the uh, upstairs um, um, where the, the truck, fire truck is, the, the rebar, the floor. Mm -hmm. So the that's truck. the next thing on my uh -oh. list. Um, 
um, so the engineer who came and just told us, you know, within the next year or two, it needs to be addressed. Um, quoted us, what did he say, twenty five hundred dollars? I think he said twenty six hundred dollars. Um, to do a full workup for that. Um, and we have forty six hundred dollars in the. Sorry, sorry, sorry. To do what? Um, to to fully assess the the fire department fire department floor and the rebar and um give us a re an understanding on this level yes yeah. on this level yeah give us an understanding of what we need to do to fix it um because um the rebar is broken and the floor is deteriorating and there was a leak in the one of the fire trucks for I'm assuming or I was told over a year or longer <coughs> so that also caused significant damage in the floor um and fire trucks sitting on top of a second story floor um but anyway so we were quoted 26 or 2500 dollars to do a full assessment um on that floor and we could there's 4600 dollars in the building um it would be maintenance um line right now so we could take money from there or there's still money in the municipal bond um so uh because right now there's pipes downstairs that are leaking from the boiler um that are deteriorating because of all the damage in the floor from the fire department so this is more of a we need to move forward with this Which kind of thing. confirmed that too when they came today yeah They're like there's a lot of spots that are bad and i said yep Plumber told us. So they're going to come back next week and repair the pipe, like replace the pipe because it's just, it's just deteriorating from, from the leak. And if you look up at the, the ceiling, you know, there's big flakes of rust, like the stairs, you know, that are just hanging off the ceiling. And then, yeah. We need to get that done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. We said within the next couple of years, we said it, it, it wasn't something we have to do tomorrow, but we'll definitely want to get it done in, in within the next couple of years but i think we're all very familiar how things move in the municipal world so addressing it now is a good thing yeah. you know at least rolling the ball down the mm -hmm. down the bowling alley we um so that that's my follow-up with that um come back here uh um you had reached out about the somebody uh, concerning about the trees on the corner of Homer Hill. Um, we had Inch Engstrom's mm -hmm. go and look to see if it's, uh, give us a quote. Uh, for one of the bad ones is $300 and it's $1,100 for all trees. Um, we don't have $1,100 budgeted for this year, so we could just do the one bad tree right now um, and then do the other trees. Are they any power ones? No, I think they wouldn't be something that someone could just cut down. Yeah, it was in the fence, in the power line breach last year. They're not touching them. They're just in such a place. They're overhanging. They're yeah, no, they're not even overhanging. Oh. Yeah. They're, they're in like the, the, the lines come like this and then kind of go in a V like this. So the trees are right here in the V, but nothing's touching our. So if you cut them down there. Yeah, I mean, that's, I would say. Well, we'll contact yeah, them anyway. Actually, anyway, because. Because if, if there's like a risk that it's going to take out their lines, then they will take care of that. Well, these people have, oh, even though they, these people have buckets and stuff and they. I'm sure but, these people are capable of it. Yeah. <laughs> but so we that, don't have I'm to pay for it. Yeah. It, you might be able to get them to it. Okay. Right? I'm going to contact them. Anyway. Where, where can I be That's at the end of Civic Street. I don't know the name, but is that right where it turns down? To uh, the main road, yeah. Okay, on that side, not on the Homer Hill side. Oh, 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 okay. Where Homer Hill and Civic Street and Main Street all. Got it. At, at the very least, just make sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at the worst case, say they say no. Right. It's on you, and then go back to. Okay. The um. There is. A property on Indian Point Loop that um, is town owned, and somebody is interested in buying it if we want to put it out to bid. Um, I'm not 100% sure 
what it originated as and why the town owned it. I don't know if forever ago it was attached to our property or maybe an old wood lot or whatever it may be. Is it um, on here? Yeah, so it's I know the, the, I know the, the person who's inquiring about this. So yes, yeah. I know the person to it, it was attached to Clark's property a while back. It's the sliver between the end of the Indian Point Loop Shore Road, I guess mm -hmm. it's called on that side, and then it hit Island Road on the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't think it's a buildable lot. It's pretty it's bad. not. Yeah. It's not. Um they they wanted it um because their concerns are you couldn't put anything permanent, but you could put a trailer or something like that mm -hmm. on it and they would just rather own it. Um but 0.78 acres. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um they were wondering if they could just directly buy it from us and I'm almost 98% sure that we need to start to have to bid for that kind of thing. If we, if we wanted to, on the, um, the thought that I had for that property was to see if we have rights of way to connect up on both sides and make a walking path through there so that you can have a recreation loop around Indian Point Loop and then to um, put a dock out there with maybe some picnic tables or something. So it'd be uh, another town space. Beach, yeah. Sunset View Beach catalog kind of kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that's an idea. Yeah, when she um brought it up, she was like, um, they wanted to put a park there and um they said that in you can't use the property until like September or something because it's all wet and mushy and whatever. And I was like, well, I, I'll just pass the information along. Um, so yeah, she just wants to be kept in the loop if we do decide to put it out to bid um, or keep it for a stash of um, town properties. And I just think there's an expense involved in connecting with Project of Dawson and seeing where the insurance is and that other stuff that is going to be considered in here. Um, and that brings us to tax acquired properties. Um, I sent you guys all the information on all the ones that we have currently. And um anyways uh so all oh perfect cool so the top one 51 north guilford road um we've been receiving some payments um but the essentially the town still owns it and um there's still quite a bit of money still owed on the last one the well the year that it was foreclosed on um but uh aside from that one i have not heard or had any correspondence with any of the owners and they've received multiple notices and or letters and so they're very much in the the know and in the 60-day redemption letter, it it tells them if you have 60 days to redeem your property, and if you don't, it will be put up for bid. So, so are you suggesting we, Jeffrey Berry, will continue to be allowed to make payments? Um, that's up to you guys. Well, what percentage of the back taxes have been paid at this point? Well um is it a drop in the bucket or a significant amount it he's been paying like a hundred to three hundred dollars every month um i think that he's more recently started to pay them than when the first letters went out about it he was actually in florida and his letter got returned to us and so when he got back from florida um he came in here so i said oh i gave him his letter and explained and um so he, he did start making some payments they're not super regular payments it's like 2019 taxes 2018 2019 
and he hasn't paid subsequent tax years either because the oldest tax year gets get applied ahead. first. Because okay. okay. at, at this point, so he hasn't paid the tax years. Um, can you scroll down a bit so that I can see where he's his answer right now? That's oh, history. I didn't I didn't look at the, all this was here. Yeah, so it gives information Street. of how much is owed, what okay. what's on for each. I should have kept going. Okay, There's so, 51 North Guilford. Yeah, so, all right. So, so the original amount was 684 and 690 is now owed. So, um, portion of the so, so he's, he's paid been, some of the interest off of it. But this is 2020. So he's paid yep. 2019. Yeah, so he's, paid so he's now working on 2020. Yes. Has that gone to tax sale yet? Um, or I'm sorry, I'm not using the right terminology in New, right back in New Hampshire again. Um, 2020 is the one he's working on now. Um, and so the foreclosures were for 2019. Yeah, yeah. Right. And okay. I thought when I looked the other day there was a balance due. So what's the one he's paying the third now? Well, there's still three years, but I think that's what we were thinking. Um, oh, maybe. But it's maybe. 2020, 21 now. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, maybe. So that's why there's three years. So he has paid off 2019. So now we're just at 2020, 2021, and 2022. So if he's well, able to pay $300 a month, he would have these. But let's take a step back here. So yeah. um, he, he just just paid 2019. Yeah, yes. So, um, like within the last couple of months. Okay. So I wish I could. This have... should have been foreclosed on last year. Right? It, it was foreclosed. Okay. So it has been foreclosed. Yeah. I don't own this property. Yeah. And technically, um, technically speaking, you don't have to accept any payments that he has been making. It's the tax collector's decision. Um, right. Whatever, so whatever. this is news to me. Um, and the issue that I have is that. Uh, I don't want the town to be liable for somebody living in a house that we own and they don't. So can you can you find out what our liability is in this type of situation yep. and what we should do? Um, I'm, hang on. He, if he wants, can come up with the money to pay the taxes, all the, all the better. That's the ideal solution. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be a conclusion to this story here, mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah. Okay. So, so we foreclosed in for the 2019 taxes. Was that, that foreclosure deed recorded? Yeah. So, um, so we do the so town the lead, owns yeah, the property. The, yeah. So the town owns all of those properties. I'll okay. say that. So we don't just have a tax lien, we actually own the property. Right. So those ones were foreclosed on, uh, and some of them were foreclosed on more than a year ago yeah some of these are just empty lots yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a couple of homes yeah Um, yeah, so there was one on there that had like lots of years on it. So, what, what do you want us to do with this information? Um, this one, um, well, we basically need to make a decision if we're just going to keep sitting on them or if we're going to um, move forward and want to go through the process of putting them out to bid or. If it's a residence, I think we want to we might want to treat things differently than mm -hmm. if it's a and vacant lot. Mm -hmm. Are are all the other ones um, <laughs> just land or um no they're yep. Well, see, Pleasant Street is just land. Yeah. Route fifteen is just land. North Guilford has a house. That's Indian Point Loop is land, and 414 Elliott's Hill has a house. Dopon has a 
but it's it assessed a at that. Last time I was down there, it was okay. a camper that he was living in. There may have been a shed down there as well. Oh. It's not much of a, nobody lives there. It's just, oh, okay. no, no, he moved quite a while ago. Okay. So can, um, for the next meeting, mm -hmm. can, can you find out um, how we should be doing this? The one closure where it, yeah, tax foreclosure is where somebody is living in the yeah. property. Yeah, I guess. Um, and then maybe that will give us some time to the look at the property can be in greater detail and in the thoughts about what we should do with them. Okay. So is Mr. Barry going back to Florida? He does in the winter typically, right? Um, I, I think he typically doesn't, but he did last year for some reason. Because he has Florida plates. Yes, he did register his, register his car while he was down there last time, but he's been back. I don't know exactly what his, what his plan is. Well, I just have one last question. I'm so sorry. So um, I, I was just also wondering, I'm curious if there's like a paper trail made to these as far as um, they've been notified so as far as knowing the validity. Yeah, so we started this process over because I wasn't sure if it was done prior to me. So I was the one that wrote the redemption letters and all of this and um, followed the manual to make sure that we were doing it all correctly and had all the certified letters and all of, you know, all their signings and stapled to their tax um, lien for whatever year that it actually went to foreclosure. And so that they were process. notified their, yes. their, their property foreclosed mm -hmm. and they were notified. Yeah. Uh, and your point is they should have said something. Yeah, I mean, well, or... right. And Marty and I were talking about it too. Like if I was in that position, like if for whatever reason, I mean, we all have hardships, Um, but come to the select board, come into the town office, say, you know, I'm I'm really struggling. I'm really trying yeah. to something, anything. Yeah, but it's, yeah, you would think so, but it's a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So it's very unfortunate, really. And um, the Dillon Investments, I'm not sure who who that is or what. But I'll, I'll look into these properties. Yeah, so um, it, it has all of the actual um, property information. Right, so right. Do Dillon Investments own other properties that are not paid up? No, just these two. Just these two. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know the story, but like the Ullman one, I think somebody died a long time ago, right? I think that's, I, I think that's what it is. So, so we should be concerned. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else on this topic? Um, no, okay. not for me, anyways. Um, anything else in town manager report? Uh, blah, 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 blah. No. Oh. The bridge ranger, ranger, I assume that was the Billy Brook. Um, yes. Over your head. Yes, yes, it is. Um, actually, that is not on the agenda, is it? The Billy Brook? No. Okay, so, um, we'll talk about that now. Um, so he gave me his recommendations on, um, the engineer and whatever. Obviously, with such a large project, we'd have to, um, put it out to bed. But this engineer, um, Eric Calderwood, I think is his name, um, he, uh, we've been talking anyways, and so he is going to work with, a local contractor named Josh and get us some numbers at least so that we know um, where to start with this kind of project. Um, and because right now it's posted for 22 pounds, which at uh, 22,000 tons, which 22 pounds, uh, 22,000 uh, pounds. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, if you think of that, it seems like a lot, but I mean, how much is a loaded plow truck or how much is a fire truck? So, already complained about it. So, um, it, yeah, so we just need to make sure that we're moving forward. Um, so he's going to give us some budgetary numbers and we can put together some sort of moving forward thing. Um, and so he, with the repair, instead of a full, um, replacement or whatever, uh, they, both the, um, bridge ranger and, Eric um, agreed that if this repair was to um, fit in, of course, he has to come and do measurements and all this stuff too, but um, they both feel like this repair would um, have the same structural sound as a brand new bridge. So it would last us um, just as long as a new bridge, 
with a lot less um, money. So anyway, so that's where we are at with that. And um, well, he told he told me that he would have it um, at least number wise for the meeting tonight. Um, but I checked with him on Tuesday and he didn't have that information yet. So um, uh, I was going somewhere. No, that's okay. It's okay. Um, oh, and reading through previous emails, Eric um, had already been in contact with Daniel about this bridge um, in the past. Uh, and I just noticed that today when I typed in his name into my search of my email. So in those emails, there was talk of um, some specific funding or something. So when Eric is supposed to call me next week. And so when he calls me next week, I'm going to say, hey, so by the way, I found these emails about this funding. Um, what exactly was it? And um, can you tell me more? Can you some, is it something that we can do or whatever? Um, and where I think before they were doing a complete replacement. And so maybe that's why that particular funding was for that. And he didn't mention it to me for this repair. But um, I know that the actual arch that they need is, um, over twenty thousand dollars, so I know that piece, anyways. <laughs> so that's that's the last piece of my town manager spiel. <laughs> I think it's very thorough. There's a lot going on. Too. Lots going on. Yeah. Um, committee reports, communication. Ah, uh, um, <laughs> I don't think there's anything new there except to say that we will be having a tree lighting ceremony Trudy Bennett has taken that on and it's good because if I was going to do it we weren't going to have it <laughs> yeah um bicentennial pumpkin carving went well the lighting costume parade everybody had a good time that's good and the food drive seems to be going quite well lots yeah. of stuff coming in so lots there, of great stuff in there. there's uh been a lot of feedback about all the decoration that's been going on and how we should just leave it like that. You mean the seasonal decoration? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was all John's idea, so. Yeah, right, it doesn't have to be a community-wide thing. It's just right. a community, this is what we do yeah. different times of the year with the different people. Yeah, it certainly does. And it's fun. It's a lot of it's fun. fun. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to Christmas. All right, old business, easy charging station, the kitchen's been moved around. Okay. I am a So I have managed to get all of my pieces to this together. And I think I sent you guys a copy of this in the meeting as well. Yes. Okay. Um do, 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 do. so this the quote is for uh one dual charger and um the installer Mark Reynolds. Um said that there's room in the panel um, at the gym. And so we can just bring the power from the gym um, and bring it, dig as close down to, before getting to like the, the well and then um, running it along the outside of the gym so that we're not you know destroying the well and we don't have to cut into the um, the parking lot. Perfect. So where the, where is the panel in the gym? It is. Um, do you know where the furnace is downstairs? Downstairs, the panel is downstairs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's all. So I mean. it's that's it's right now. Okay, down yeah, that yeah. side of the building. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. Perfect. No, that's great. Yeah. So, um, that was the last piece of it, and to, to some of it, like the electrical service upgrades, are included in the installation quote. Um, so. Did you guys have a chance to look at this and did you notice anything that I might have missed or because uh, my yeah my main concern was just about the the electrical interconnection which we mm -hmm. sorted out um the ensuring that the pinching was in, included in the yeah quotes. it definitely was. um and then the last one was yeah then then the you know the, the ballers and, and yep. all that kind of stuff so yep um so those are those are included yeah you said yep. that earlier yep. on yeah yep those were included in the charge point quote 
And then uh, and the ongoing networking costs are, el those are eligible to be included, right? I do believe so, yeah. So um, I, let's just make sure that, I, have, I haven't reviewed this thoroughly, yeah. um, but let's just make sure that that is included because otherwise you might be a, get a grant and then be on the hook if you didn't receive it here. Yeah. Um, yes, because I am double sure what this does from like I've only looked at the um, efficiency main websites about 600 times this week just to make sure that I knew what I was doing. Um, Okay, so five year commercial plot plan. Oops. But yeah, I am almost 100% sure that that was included in it. Um, but I'll triple check just to make sure before I put that in. Um, but I think otherwise, it's good to Um, then can I can I motion that we approve the grant application for permission? All in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Let's do it. Very good. Thanks for pulling that together, Elena. Yeah. You succeeded where others have failed. <laughs> Did you have to call the contact one of the contact people? Oh, like, so, to get that oh yeah. So I I did, and she's like, you know, this is it, it, it's going to be a struggle for you because you're you're rural oh. and um, either and you're not doing very nice. So mm -hmm. some people won't do less than ten, or so I had that problem contacting some people, and I'm like, we don't need ten, yeah. <laughs> we don't have a place for ten, we don't, you know. So I'm just like, okay, and so um, I talked with her. I think that was like Tuesday, and. Um, Something came up in that installer's plans, and so he was able to come a week early <laughs> to do it. And um, he was like, you know, if you give me a list of contractors, I'll reach out to them today. And if they can give me a quote today, I'll give you a quote today. So I'm like, you betcha, I will do that for you. And so he came right down here, and I gave him a list, and I was like, here you go. So, um, yeah. All right, name DOT Village Partnership Initiative RFP. Okay. Um, I also sent that to you guys too. I don't know if yep. you um did you notice any typos that I missed or any mumbo jumbo that I missed? Yeah, so um, whatever dates is in there, it'll be, um, I think I'll use the timeline that Matt um, sent us. It was like plus three weeks or whatever from the time that we send it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Where, where did you guys post it? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we would post it like on our website and stuff, and then um, we can send it directly to some or all of the um, DOT companies. Or mm -hmm. engineers, or um, is this that that list of approved and then something in each? That was the easy part. To, so, um, the, well, no, DOT yeah, has, yes, um, like okay. so there's 15 of them. Yeah. Um, so we can send them to all 15 or pick a few, or <laughs> have to do a few, all 15, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, we'll be lucky if we get yeah. some of them back, so yeah, yeah so um when i'm just filling in the dates i'll just use what uh matt suggested in his email plus four weeks or whatever that is so. okay so we can post it yeah okay post all right yeah. No, go. Yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. New to okay. Um, so we have to have an open comment right now. I know that we don't have any people here. 
Um, but just in case anybody wants to voice their opinion about the GA and the maximums and the variance, um, nobody's here. So it's a it's an annual thing. The set uh, the state sets the maximums and then we just adopt them. Um, so it's basically just um, I guess you make a motion to um, sign this ordinance set by the state. Um, just for just for record, can you send there's usually some accompanying PDFs that show what the GAs are? Yep. Um, Actually, I don't have any issue with it. Um, do that, but. Here is. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. Actually, I actually had them all, but then I needed them for a GA. So I took them out of my be ready folder. There's a lot changing in the general assistance world. I can tell you for that because mm -hmm. um, this was actually supposed to be on last month's agenda. And the day of our meeting, they actually said, um, hold up. There's been so many changes. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to wait until next month. And mm -hmm. so they're changing them like monthly. Right now. Um, okay. Did you read this letter? No. We seem to have lost a video on Mr. Owl. Where was it? His eyes are nice and glowy. But he's not. You would think that you see there's yeah. a blank screen there, so. Well, this looks like mumbo jumbo. Mm -hmm. You guys can look in there for a minute. But yeah. I will move motion that we adopt the municipality of Monson general assistance ordinance as written. Second. In favor? Sue. So. Yeah, she <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Wanted to make sure everybody has their voice. <laughs> Yeah, we actually did that um, last year when I was here helping. I got to figure that out. Burials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, community choice broadband. Okay. Um, so many things. All right, so um, we received the invoice for $50,000 for the premium choice um, broadband fiber being installed. Um, and in correspondence of all the emails between Daniel and Bill Varney, it was that we were using the ARPA funds um, to pay the invoice. Um, the problem was it was never really put into a town meeting or anything um, saying that that's what we were going to do with our funds, but there is a warrant in the town meeting that says it, it gives the select board power to use funds um, given as grants or any other monetary thing from any organization or government piece. I don't know exactly how it's worded, but it's just something similar to that. So, um, yeah. So basically. Yeah, it wasn't he, yeah, in a in a budget meeting. So we looked back to Marty's lovely budget meeting notes that have come in handy so many times. Um, and they talked about it there and he said that he was going to put it in the town meeting stating that we were going to use fifty thousand dollars from the ARPA funds to um the the premium choice broadband. In the budget meeting, 
Yeah, but was at a budget meeting because you know how you and I were like, I know we've talked about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, but I couldn't find it anywhere. In, and um, we've talked about it in, in meetings. Um, and I, it, it's been discussed a lot. And initially, um, the money was going to be paid over three years. And so um, the topic, at, that was the topic at the budget meeting. And then um, it was, you know, suggested that we use the ARPA funds to pay for that. And then we wouldn't have to budget this money. Mm -hmm. um, so then, so, the sixteen thousand dollars that was proposed was changed to zero oh, because okay. we were going to do that, and it was going to be put in the town meeting warrant, but it wasn't. And so then, in aware. one of his, um, there was an email to Bill Varney also that said, "We plan to use the stimulus money that uh, money we are getting to pay our share." And I have always is had an article at meeting giving the select board authority to spend any money we get from grants, etc. So we are good to go. So now the bill is sixty thousand we only keep, so um, we haven't paid it yet just because you know nothing has really been officially confirmed as to how how we're going to that. We, we have gotten all the effort in mm -hmm. So we do have it. Um, so is the question whether we have authority to spend the ARPA money? Um, not well. It's I think it was a little. I, I after reading that Warren article, I <laughs> see that I, I, you know, some towns have felt like they needed to have a special town meeting to just really make sure people know what we're spending the ARPA mm -hmm. funds on. Um, and Eric felt strongly about that too, about not just deciding about putting it out to public meeting, uh, to town meeting, and so it would. It would be a matter of having a special town meeting if if we were going to go that route, which I would probably say up to have sooner rather than later, mm -hmm. so that we can get it paid. Yeah. So on the truck, um, without getting into details, I'd say if we're gonna, I, I'm I also think that we should have public input in not to spend the money. Um, but if we are going to be spending money, we should. Coordinate these things and just say this is all the money mm -hmm. that they they really want. So mm -hmm. that's all I have to say about that. So ARPA funds and truck purchase, and not wait for June, May. No, we can't do that. We can't. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I feel like somebody would have something to say about that. <laughs> okay. So. So town meeting so, to clean that up. To wrap this up, the. Um, is is there any objection to using the ARPA money amongst the select board to using the ARPA money for the broadband issue? Not for me, because I I remember this conversation, you know, um, during that budget meeting two years ago. Yeah, and, and then we discussed it last year. So I just. It's been an on, ongoing. Uh, yeah, it and it's been brought up. Uh, it's been my understanding that that's where it was going to get paid right. from, and, from the um, get go. So I pulled all the the meeting minutes of which it was talked about, and um, and some of them said Daniel reminded everyone fifty thousand dollars was already promised of our performance to free room choice. So like it's definitely not a secret or whatever. And we so have it. and we have it. Yeah. So yeah. So, so the actually this is kind of exactly what they wanted us to spend the money on. Exactly. Yeah. And I talked about roads or something yeah. else and we said no it's got less than that. Not that yeah. 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 It was yeah, yeah, yeah. So and this benefited so many people. So like yeah, and it's huh. it was actually a two and a half million dollar project. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. because trying to piece this all together is just so one of those things. And so I pulled um, the the sheet that has which is probably the first one. Yeah, right here. So our share was fifty thousand dollars, and then the Connect Main grant was two hundred ninety thousand dollars, and then um, the remaining was eight hundred and. $27,000. So I feel like our $50,000 was yeah. very, you the know. The thing we could do is just like take up the um, income budget schedule thing on the road. Because, what? Know, they're, they're <laughs> so I know somebody that lives there and, and called because they said, oh, we don't, we don't, we don't have that anymore. 
What? Mm -hmm. I thought they were supposed to do all the roads. Yeah, that's the last yeah. One. so if that's the case, let's look into this. That's okay. not right. Because we can go to the camp down on, on um, the end of Pleasant. And we're going to the end of Pleasant. Oh, this is Robin. Yeah. Okay. But you can go um, and go 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 this way. I'm going to say that way. Right. And there's a he said that seven other parks on the road that could yeah. And there, look at that, that needs to be fixed. roads pleasant is served and green roads unserved and of mm -hmm. course my color non-color printer doesn't tell me which <laughs> green and which ones are blue but cool. if, you have, if you have somebody you can contact there and just ask what's the deal you know, yeah. Everyone yeah. Can be. right that's okay. how it's supposed to be so do you, when do we want to schedule the um the special town meeting i guess we know weekend um well, I think if we're going to have a special town meeting, we should have an idea of what we'd like to use the remainder of the money for. Yes. So the remaining portion would be what did we have? Like nineteen nine thousand. Yeah, sixty nine thousand one hundred seventy eight dollars is total. So the remaining would be nineteen thousand one hundred seventy eight. Mm -hmm. So does anybody have any thoughts? What would we like to see? Mm -hmm. One could be our contribution toward the village partnership okay. study. Um, I have some notes on this. Which is going to be more than 19,000, as I yeah. recall. Yeah. How much is Mm -hmm. Did you just say that it wasn't a payment, a, a contribution? contribution yeah. I think our share was 30%. Right? 30 mm -hmm. I thought it was. Um, our 10% toward the EV charger. Oh, yeah. What What is the total? Is it 25,000? Uh, 20, I think, or 22. How about I just tell you what it has? Oh, it's literally in front of me. Uh, 19,965 is the total. Oh, wait. For the, the total for the EV charger, right? Yes, so 19,965 is the total. So is there seven thousand dollars for your school? Yeah. Um, no. Okay, so no, it's more than that to be elected. Yeah, it was included in um it was eight thousand eight hundred and fifty for the installation and the electrical. So it was grouped together. I so I saw a number that's twelve thousand. Yeah, so um, that was the eight hundred and fifty plus the um thirty one the second concrete yeah. work together. So that's the twelve, and then the charger is eleven thousand, right? Eleven two eighty. So we're up to almost twenty four hundred dollars, twenty four thousand dollars. Yeah, eleven two eighty. So what was happening? Oh, um. That's the missing piece. The five year assure. Which I'm not sure what that is. So there's a five year commercial cloud plan and then a five year assure. That sounds like insurance or a warranty. Yeah, that's not listed on the carbon day breakdown. Yeah, just the cloud plan right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. see, I'm glad I wasn't right. able to remember this. Day. So, yeah, five. So, that is the that's $2,600 for five years. Um, and warranty is that on this? Conditioning and subscriptions. It doesn't say anything about warranties. 
Okay. Well, um, I'll ask her if that is a uh, something that we can. But it says other eligible class. So, um, well, I'll ask the girl at efficiency main if that is an eligible class, and then if it is, I'll include it in that portion of it. So yes, the eligible work was eight thousand. I wonder, like I say, I wonder for in, in the interest of of ELPA money, if we um, could do something at a special town meeting that says like authorize the select board to use these funds um, for a project to have matching funds from other like from grants for the city. Well and I was just looking at the the treasury site to know what they can be used for and and I was just wondering, you know, it's where is a limit of you know to what we can use the those funds for. Um, you know also included like in, impact on the on small businesses and um, right, right. I was just wondering, like, if mini grants are, you know, if a town can use those as mini grants to impact its um, business. Um, That's a good idea. Yeah. Or for economic development efforts. Yeah. And then sewage and water and stormwater infrastructure. <laughs> Well, um, one thing that if we can make a schedule work would be if we could do our resiliency workshop before we do the special town meeting, then we could get that input and make recommendations like that. We can use some for use of the rest of the ARPA funds. Yeah. yeah. So then, as far as timing goes, um, sooner. I guess we could do special time meeting any time. Mm -hmm. So um, just need what a week's notice. Yeah. So get the resiliency thing scheduled as quickly as possible. Yeah, maybe we could even do it like one day, then the next day, or something like that. Right mm -hmm. before, like the week before Thanksgiving. Oh, next week. Oh, it's early this year, right? It's, wait, is it next? No, no Thanksgiving is in two weeks. Yeah, yeah. This is the team of the week. Before. I'm sorry, I'm just going to ask. When is this year gone? Honestly, huh? next said, week where has this is year gone? out. Is just nuts. Mm -hmm. So, but if we do it, we do it. So, um, I guess I don't know if I just got the week of weeks. First week of summer is out. So either either the week maybe the week, the week after Thanksgiving, is that an option? Yeah. Um, because I, I'm just thinking like the the urgency to approve. That's what I'm thinking right. because I've already had the bill for well, it, a couple of weeks. It's so. that no one's gonna lose sleep over that. Mm, no, probably not. They won't add on. But they just weren't terms that were due upon the yeah. receipt. Don't, <laughs> don't live by the language in the <laughs> words. Jesus. The, this has been a project years in the making. Um, no, one, no one's losing sleep. I don't think this is going to come worth as well as <laughs> And just let them know we're waiting on dead, yeah. dead insurance to be done. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. There you go. That's oh, true. I mean, we have, a, we have something to say. Hey, right. we're not done yet. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so um, I'll make sure to reach out to Lori tomorrow and and see if she can do something. Um, so the week after Thanksgiving is what mm -hmm. we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. And so the workshop is going to be before the town meeting. Is that what you're um, yeah? Well, so yeah. based on based on what she says for timing, we could either do it in the same day, those mm -hmm. two things, or we could do the workshop and then maybe. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking what what was decided week of after Thanksgiving? Yeah, twenty eighth. That's what so you, that's what you're gonna shoot for and talk to your person and then tell me and then yes. we'll go from there. Yes. Week after Thanksgiving. All right. Truck our street. Mm -hmm. Um, da -da 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 -da. 
Did you guys have a chance to review? Mm-hmm. She's a beaut, isn't she? <laughs> um, yeah, so I you put a sander on it for me and mm -hmm. tile so mm -hmm. yep. So what I did and I shared my um thoughts a little bit the other day with Tyler is what I did is I reached out to other public works departments, what they have had good luck with um, with theirs. Obviously, I talked with Steve on what his thoughts were. I talked with Brian. Um, I also talked with a mechanic that um, essentially deals with all of these things that keep breaking and whatever, um, and got recommendations from all of them and kind of pulled them together to create these specs. Um, and uh, I also talked with Pete from DOT to make sure that I'm like, okay, this, these are my ideas. Make sure that I'm on the right, right side of things. He's like, no, that's good. So, um, and uh, same with the, the sander. Um, we have a stainless steel one now. I said a polycaster because um, the general consensus is that it doesn't ding when you hit it with the loader and um it's just more susceptible to the the winters and the sand and salt that we're putting in it and whatever um so when i talked with whitehead ford basically um they said you know in order to give accurate pricing like to come up with what you are looking for an rfp and then um let us know and then send us um what you have and what your current trucks are um at the same time and then we can kind of give you some accurate pricing because it's just so all over the place and it changes every day mm -hmm. and all of those things so i was like okay well at least come up with what it is that we're actually looking for what is it that we want um and everybody said and so this is the low the highest class that you can have without a cdl mm -hmm. um and so we would be able to do um a, basically it would be the the medium in between what our white truck is and our green truck mm -hmm. so we would be able to haul more so that it's not sitting 24 7 um so yeah that's how i came up with all this stuff yeah very good put it out there yeah okay send it to every dealership in the united states <laughs> okay is that it that's it. So now we'll go into executive session for one one MRFA section four zero five six A personnel matters. So we will adjourn. Okay. Let's have lunch at nine. Right. Are all the warrants all set now? What? Yeah, yeah. Was. I didn't see it like standing around. Well, it's all just saying over here because there's nobody here. <laughs> right, right. Well, it usually goes like one by one. And we need to stop recording. All right. So I'm um, stopping. I'll see you on Tuesday.